Hey guys, Emily here. You may be asking yourself, why is she sticking her hand in the river? We are, as the experts call it, crayfish fishing. I went out with Dr. Bronwyn Williams from the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences to three different places all across the state, looking for crayfish far and wide. I learned so much more about crayfish than I ever thought possible. Come along with me and see what I discovered at our first stop, the Haw River. to get, get it with its butt towards you. Like that? Yep. There you go. Woo! Nice! There he is. Oh, his legs. There she is. She, yes, you're right. <laughs> there she is. So, there you go. Nice! Nice! Hey! Uh, awesome. <laughs> okay. Let's search for more. Yes. We got it, yeah. When they molt, um, they shed that, you know, their old exoskeleton, and then they're actually kind of squishy. So that new exoskeleton that's underneath is is really pretty soft, and so they usually hide because um, they're really really vulnerable mm. at this stage. They hide so that they're not eaten. Yeah. So she is so newly molted that. Um, She's actually a little bit squishy. So if you want to touch her, just don't crush, but you'll you'll sort of see that she's a little bit kind of soft. I'll let her grab. Okay. Oh yeah, Isn't I that can weird? tell. A little softer than the first one. Yes, yeah, because they can't grow when they're hard. There's no corruption, mm. no so. Yeah. Nice chain. Nice. <laughs> Awesome. Next stop on our search for crayfish is a little more muddy at Walnut Creek in Raleigh. Crayfish in this habitat don't live under rocks. Instead, they burrow in the mud. What they make as they are burrowing are these mud towers called chimneys. That was our indicator that a crayfish was nearby. First thing I want to do is to dig without losing or packing that that burrow back in and that's tricky but that said their burrows tend to go down a fair bit because when a predator starts to try to dig them out they will go down mm. the sound is the, is the best part it's so lovely <laughs> Okay, so this burrow now is taking a turn and is going that way. Oh, okay. Oh, yep, I got the crayfish. <gasps> Can you see the crayfish in the mud? Yep. Well, you're close to it. See it moving? Yes, right there. 
Look at that little guy. <gasps> there he is. Yeah. This one little dude yep, made, made all that. of this. Yep. <gasps> wow. Isn't that incredible? That is so incredible. Let me grab one of those buckets and I'm going to put some water in it so we can wash him off and you cool. can take a better look. Basically, yes. So this is the common name of this crayfish is the devil crayfish. Um, and what keys me in on that is actually the color pattern. These very bright red tips to the claws. Mm -hmm. And if I looked really closely, it would have these red highlights on the rostrum. Again, that projection, the nose-like thing, um, has sort of reddish legs. Yeah. So these guys are really pretty. Little. Little. It's a tiny, it's a tiny one. Yeah. Cool. So that is the art of digging. All right, let's find another one. All right. Oh, you got him. Oh. You got a female in berry. She's got eggs. <gasps> wow. All right, that's pretty cool. So she basically like exudes the fertilized eggs out. And so they actually stay there and she keeps them and will actually fan, like fan them to oxygenate them and everything. And then they hatch out into tiny, tiny little crayfishes and they stay put, so they actually stay on the female until they've undergone a couple molts and have gotten bigger. And then they start to foray out a little bit and, and then come back if they're stressed. And then, and at some point then- They're just out. They're, they're out and about. Um, yeah. So I can tell, I, I see why you tried to pinch me. Yeah, protecting, protecting her little brood. She's a feisty mother. I don't blame you. <laughs> Our final stop, Joe's Creek, a Blackwater River close to the southern border of North Carolina. I spent the day with Bronwyn and students from Appalachian State University to be an honorary scientist. As it turns out, crayfish live under rocks, in the mud, and this time, under the trees. We're jabbing into the, into the edge and um, dirt and leaves and stuff collect on the bottom of the net and then we pull it up and look, look inside. So scoop and shake, jab and, jab and scoop and. So is the idea that the crayfish live in and under all this dirt and roots and vegetation? Yeah, so um, the habitat for a lot of these, because you don't, you know, I mean, you think of, I guess typically we would just start flipping rocks, right? Well, mm -hmm. here there are no rocks. So what they're doing is they're, they're finding places to, to hide in amongst all this woody debris, all these down logs and branches and such. And then a lot of times they'll get up in this hanging vegetation and they'll just kind of tuck their way in. That's a good one. Woo! It's a big brazzle eye. Mm -hmm. oh, beautiful. That's about as big as they get. Too. Yeah. And it's colored. Nice. Beautiful. Yeah, female. Female. Looks like she's starting to put on glare too. Oh yeah? Oh yeah. Here. Yeah. <laughs> what does that mean? From so she'll kind of clean off the bottom of her uh, her abdomen uh -huh. there, and it'll um, allow it to um, secrete kind of a um, a gluey substance that then um, can allow all the eggs to 
know, maintain in one one kind of pouch on underneath your abdomen. Nice. Behold. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, that's a beautiful Braswell eye. I don't know how to help. Beautiful. That's how you. <laughs> cool. Nice. So beautiful. All the crayfish we uncovered were studied thoroughly by the students. They brought with them notebooks, cameras, and other tools to document the crayfish before releasing them back into the creek with perhaps a new name or two. Okay, Emily Jr. is in there. Emily the third. There they go. <laughs> Bye. Have a nice live. Thanks for meeting me. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs>